we can actually break down the different phases of the jump and understand specifically what type of training is going to help Nils maximize his performance. All right, we're here with performance specialist Ben Shear, and we're going to do a little case study here on Nils. So Nils told us he's done a lot of long, slow training, long distance running, kind of endurance type training. And yep. so we put him through the eccentric utilization ratio test here, where we did a squat jump and a counter movement jump. Um, and just analyzing this, what do you see here, Ben? Yeah, so first of all, just if you're not aware with those terms, the big difference is a counter movement jump is when you start standing up, right? You do your dip down before you go up. And a squat jump is you start at your bottom position, excuse me, and you only go up. You don't actually continue to go down. So you're not getting that pre-stretch that we call of the muscles before you go. So typically, people who are elastic or explosive, that pre-stretch really helps them get bigger heights. But if we look at Nils here, right, and we see what he's doing, so we got on our right-hand side the counter movement, this is kind of his de-weighting phase or the downward motion of his uh, counter movement jump. But what we see is he's kind of got this U-shaped trough, right? A U-shaped trough to me means kind of a lack of ability to create real muscular stiffness or it's stopping eccentrically, right? We'd like this U-shape that he's got going on here to look a bit more like a V-shape and a much sharper break and re-acceleration. And then if we look at the rest of the jump, kind of the slope of the jumping action itself, it's pretty similar, right? Looks pretty similar there. And then if we go across and we look at his actual jump heights, 29.67 centimeters, 29.43. So he basically jumps exactly the same. I mean, that's a margin within rep to rep for any person's gonna have some small margin. So he basically is not, <laughs> he does not have what we would call a positive eccentric utilization radio show, meaning he's not benefiting from that downward action. So while he now wants to start playing things like soccer, which take into account a lot of change of direction and braking and reacceleration, unlike that long distance running he's been doing, we need to try to add a little bit of elasticity and muscle stiffness in it. And we're not gonna just go and do a whole bunch of counter movement jumps. We actually have to train this particular phase here, this breaking part of the jump. That's what's so powerful about using like a motion catalyst plate is we're not just judging his jump height, which is what traditionally has been done. We can actually break down the different phases of the jump and understand specifically what type of training is gonna help Nils maximize his performance. So let's go show him a few things. Let's do it.